When we're young, we feel invincible, full of life and energy, and that conditions like cancer happen to someone else, usually when they're old. But new research is suggesting that just at this time of life, when we're feeling so good about ourselves, in some people, cancers can start to grow and yet not appear till many years later. If this is true and you can detect these early genetic changes, then the potential for cancer prevention is huge. The tumour that's revealing some of these secrets is one of the deadliest there is. It's cancer of the pancreas, a highly fatal malignancy of this organ that sits at the back of our abdomens. We found that pancreatic cancers progress much longer than anybody has ever believed. The usual thought about pancreatic cancer is that shortly after it forms, it rapidly metastasizes. And that is why most patients die of metastatic disease. What we found is that pancreatic cancers actually take a very long time from when they form until they metastasize. And therefore, the reason most patients die of pancreatic cancer is because we are diagnosing it very late during the whole cycle of how a pancreatic cancer forms and spreads. The timeline we found was approximately 21 years. 21 years? Which is uh, an astounding finding. It was amazing to us. We spent a lot of work trying to see if we made an error. Many, many experiments and went into this study to convince ourselves before we even published it that this was the right answer, but we are pretty confident that we are near the correct estimate for how long it takes for pancreatic cancers to form and then grow and then spread in a person with the disease. So somebody could have it brewing in their 30s? Absolutely, which is startling. The life story of pancreatic and other cancers is written in our genes in our DNA, the genetic code. Now, in a normal cell, DNA has to copy itself so that the cells can divide and multiply. It's an incredible process which occurs at huge speed. The double helix of DNA is stripped apart and a new second strand is formed by reading the genetic code backwards. Is it any surprise then that mistakes can occur in this process or that toxic chemicals could damage the DNA? Now, most of the time, our body fixes up those mistakes. But when it doesn't, and it's in a gene that controls how cells divide and multiply, it could be the first step towards cancer. Most people will never progress or develop additional mutations beyond that KRAS mutation. Some people do. Some people might develop a second mutation. That might take in another, gene. in another gene, and that might occur five, six, seven years later. Now they have a cell that has two mutations. That cell grows a little faster. And are these random events? Do we know what causes these mutations? We do not know what actually causes the mutation. That's a very fundamental question in cancer biology. We only know, or, or we would believe, that they are random events. For that initiating event, to accumulate eventually, subsequently enough mutations for it to turn into a pancreatic cancer, we've estimated it takes about 12 years in the people that develop pancreatic cancer. So where does the 21 years come from? 21 years is the total time from that initiating event in KRAS until the patient dies of their disease. Now, as I said earlier, these findings may apply to other cancers. And while what we're talking about is occurring at the level of the gene, invisible to the naked eye and in fact most microscopes, another thing is going on in cancers which are developing. There's such a thing as a precancer. This is something that's initially benign and then turns nasty. In the breast it's a small lump, in the bowel it's a polyp, and in the cervix in women it's abnormal cells on the pap smear. Now the key thing about these so-called precursors, precancers, is that if you find them early enough, you can either prevent the cancer occurring in the first place or cure it. The question is, does pancreatic cancer have one of these precursor lesions? There is a precursor for pancreatic cancer. It's called pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia, or PANIN for short. PANINs are, uh, that is the, our estimate that it takes 11 to 12 years for a PANIN to become cancer. 
So this is like the polyp in your bowel. Yes, it's exactly the polyp in the bowel. The problem with panins, unlike polyps of the bowel or precancers of the breast, is that they are very difficult to detect without a more invasive imaging method. Are any of the mutations that you've now discovered informing treatment? Because this is one of the most devilish cancers to treat. The current chemotherapy is called glucosagemcitabine doesn't work that well. Right. There are new drugs around which maybe work a little bit better. Right. Are you finding any secrets that explain why it's such a difficult cancer to treat? Not yet. Not yet. We have a lot more work to do to get that. Because now we know that we are diagnosing the cancer so late in its progression that we are in, trying to intervene at the point where it's at its most complex. So essentially the ship's been launched. Yes, it's been launched. So we want to be able to get that ship while it's still in port.